Hello everyone, my name is Kumar and welcome back to our channel Kumar Programming. This is the second part of this series where we are building e-commerce project as online sui store, right? And here today we are diving into the next JS 15, the latest and greatest version of the popular React framework. Whether you are building a dynamic web application, high performance websites, or even a full stack project, next JS 15 make it easier and even with its powerful with the app router and its new feature something like server side rendering and in this video i'll walk you through setting up a next.js 15 project from scratch and explaining each and every steps along the way by the end of this video you will be fully functional next.js setup ready for the development so if you are excited to get started smash the like button and let's jump into it before jumping into it, I'll just let you know that in our previous video, we have done the introduction where I have just explained that what the project is and what all the tech stacks that we are using. And I have given a very brief demo of this complete project, right? And if you are enjoying this video and finding it helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. And believe me, it really helps me out a lot. Also, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So you will never miss out on future content. And I'll be posting more tutorials, tips, and deep dives into the web development specifically for Next.js, React, Node.js, Angular, and full stack development projects. And your support keep me motivated to create more quality content for all of you. And if you have any questions or suggestions, drop a comment below. I read and reply to each and every single one. Now let's dive back and start our project setup. So the very first thing which we need is Visual Studio Code. I'm using it as a code editor. And if you want to use any other code editor like uh, Sublime or Vue, anything else, you can use it. But in order to follow this series, I would recommend you to use the Visual Studio Code. If you have not installed this Visual Studio Code, you can just download it from here and you can install it, right? And the next thing which we required is Node.js because all of our application is going to run on top of Node.js right so we need this node.js and you must have to download it and install it in your machine as of now the current version which we have is 22.13.1 okay and the other thing which we required is git because i have to commit our code on a after each and every session so i'd be using this git and we have to deploy our code uh, to vercel and vercel will be directly connected to our git repository right so we need this git as well and a part of that from visual studio code we need to install some useful extensions so let's see what all those useful extensions are so from this visual studio code here we have our list of all the extension and i have mentioned all the required extension in our setup.md file and if you see here this is our setup.md file and here i have mentioned what all the required installation so we need install visual studio code node.js and git right these are the basic requirement which we need and the other thing is useful extension to install which are prettier right so prettier basically it it's format your code and make it cleaner and the second thing that we have to install which is eslint and eslint basically it check the error on your code and in case of any error you have you will get to know and you will be able to fix it right and the other thing that you have to install it prisma right prisma is basically its orm tool which is used to interact with the database and why prisma because prisma is getting um very very popular as of now and because it's being used to uh, communicate with the database and in future if you want to update the database like if you want to change from postgres to mongodb you can easily it by the changing some configuration right and you don't have to do any changes in the code so prisma is getting very very powerful and the other thing which we have is simple react snippet right so simple react snippet is basically used to create our create some kind of snippet to just speed up our project right and also we are using the tailwind css so definitely it's required the intellisense for tailwind and the other thing is which we have javascript es6 code snippet you must have to install these extension and you can just go here in the extension and here you can just type whatever extension you need if i need prettier i would be getting it here prettier right so if i just click it and i can just install it over here i'm not going to do all those things because my main motive is to focus on the functionality of the project right and set up the complete project i hope you would be able to do and if you are facing any kind of issues please write in the comment below i'll try to fix those issues as soon as possible 
and once you are done with all these basic installations then you are ready to create a brand new project right so now let's start so i'll just open my command prompt and here in my project folder i'm going to run the command as a npx create next app at the rate latest right so as of now we have latest version for next is 15 so it's going to create a next project with the latest version just press enter it's going to prompt some basic question over here so you have to give the project name so i'm going to give the project name as a switch to right and would you like to use the typescript yes we are going to use the typescript would you like to use eslint yes we are going to use the eslint and would you like to use Telvin CSS? Yes, we are going to use Telvin CSS. Would you like to code inside a SRC directory? I'll just select by default no. And would you like to use app router? Yes, app router is the new feature from Next.js 15. So we are going to use this app router. And would you like to use Turbo Pack? By default, I'm not going to use the Turbo Pack. Or let's use it Turbo Pack because it's going to build our project quickly, right? So, and would you like to customize the import alias? By default, it's no. I'll go with the no. Now it's going to install our dependency. If you see here, we are going to install our dependency React and React DOM and next, right? And some of the dev dependency here is getting installed like TypeScript, Node, React, React DOM, right? And Tailwind CSS. All these are dev dependencies, right? And these three are going to be installed as a dependency. So it's going to take some time. Let's wait for that. After waiting a couple of minutes, these dependencies and dev dependencies are installed. Now let's open this project in Visual Studio. So I'll just here change the directory cd so store right now. Here I'll use code dot right, which is going to open this project in Visual Studio Code, right? So now this project is opened in Visual Studio Code. Now let's open it. Yeah, let me make it a bit bigger so it could be visible to all of you guys. I hope this would be fine, right? So now here we have our brand new application switch store and if you see here our package.json file the dependency and dev dependency which we have installed so see this is the dependency we have and these all are the dev dependency we have right so these for node react and react dom these all are we have for types because we are using typescript right so if you are using typescript we have to install some types dependency along with the main dependency okay and here we have some of the commands to build like next build start to run our project next start and use our linting just next lint right i hope that you are aware about the folder structure if not don't worry I'm just going to explain that uh, this folder structure quickly so if you see here the very first folder which we have app this is our app folder so inside our app folder we have our Favi icon and we have our global CSS where we are going to give all the CSS and here we have layout right this is the layout for our entire applications this is the root layout and this is our root page right and this is the node module folder this node module folder is not it's having the dependency installation for all those our libraries and this is our public folder it's having our all the images kind of things which is directly exposed to the public and this is nothing this is our git ignore file once we are going to commit our code so whatever the files are mentioned over here in the git ignore it's not going to commit in our repository and this is something eslint configuration file and this next.env.d.ts file is used to define types globally which we are going to use later on and this is for next config file this is next config file which is uh, used to provide the configuration for the next application and this is package.log json file right this is having the sub dependency of all the related dependencies right and this is our package.json file and here we have post css config which is being used by tailwind so we are not going to do much more changes over here and this is our readme file I'll, I'll update all the command all the required steps over here in this readme file and i'll commit the code so you guys can have it and this is for our tailwind configuration file we are going to update this tailwind configuration file in order to have applied our tailwind css and this is for typescript configuration right so i hope this folder structure is getting clear to you now all right so now let's um, run this application so i'm going to use our integrated terminal in visual studio code so here i'm going to use my git bash terminal because git bash terminal is quite faster than the other terminal we have so i'm going to use this git bash in order to run our application here if you see in our uh, package.json file here we have our command as a npm run dev right so here we are going to use npm run dev it's npm run dev it's going to run at the very first time so it will take a couple of minutes 
right so now if you see here my project is running at the port 3000 now let's open it now if you see our next js application is running and this is our app page.tsx file this is our root directory right and this page is nothing this is our root page right so now we are going to change this let me minimize this here so we can see the changes side by side and i'll do the changes here as well right okay so in our page here i'm going to do the changes so i'll just remove everything from here just remove everything from here right and i'm going to use the snippet as a sfc you remember that we have installed it sfc sfc is going to give the snippet stateless functions component right and here i'm going to give as a home page right and here we are going to use our react fragment so this is our react fragment and here i'll use home page okay now if you see at the right side here we are able to see that home page so now we are able to create our brand new project and we are able to execute it right so in our next video we are going to see how to configure our project layout and also we are going to create our header and footer so friends before wrapping it up let me create a github repository and commit this code over there right so here i'll create a github repository inside my github and i'm going to create a new repository and repository as a switch store right here i'll give switch store and i'll make it as a public and i'll here create a repository now i have created my repository so i'll just get in it here i'll stop my project here and i'll just use git in it so now it's going to initialize the git in my local repository here now, now my git is initialized and now i'm going to add all those codes so i'm going to use the command as a git add dot it's going to add all those files over there now let me check the status for all the file git status see now my all of the files are being added into the local repository now i'm going to commit it right so i'm going to commit my first commit here okay as a git commit right and i'm going to commit into the main branch and now i'm going to connect this to my remote so here is the command to connect with the remote now it's connected to the remote now i'm going to push it to the origin right so my origin is master so now it's going to push to the push the code to the origin master right yep yeah now it's committed so now if you see here inside my su store repository i would be having all the codes right and if you see the readme file i have given all the commands over here right so that's all for the day i'll see you in my next video till then take care and keep learning